何としたことじゃなぜキャノンが発射せん一体何が起ころうとしてるんじゃこれはわしのじいさんジェラルド・ロボトニック。何なんだこの振動は待て誰か来るお前まだ諦めてなかったのかもう終わりよ私たち何だって今さっき連絡があったのこの頃にすごい勢いで地上に接近してるらしいわ多分このままだと激突するわよこれは全人類に対する死刑宣告だ私の計算に狂いがなければ27分53秒後アークは地上に衝突しお前たちは世界の音も消えてなくなるだろう7つのカオスエメラルドが揃うとき私はこの復讐計画がスタートするようにしておいたプログラムはすでに不可逆だ私から全てを奪った愚かしい人間どもよ私と同じ絶望を味わうがいい他に残さなきメッセージはあるかありませんかばれ7つのカオスエメラルドが揃うとき、プロフェッサージェラルド・ロボトニック、世紀の天才科学者と歌われたわしのじいさんじゃ。なんだやっぱりお前のせいか。今すぐやめろさもないとそれができるくらいならとっくの昔にやっておるわ。説明してくれ。気はの悪いハリネズミめやはり生きておったのかあんなもんよりナッコーズの動かすシャトルの方がよっぽどすれないんだったぜ何わしが手に入れたじさんの日記じゃわからないどうしてこんなことになってしまったのか究極の生物を生み出そうなどという考えがやはり間違っていたのだろうかあの日コロニーに現れた運転目的はおそらくプロジェクトの抹消だ書の仲間たち愛しい孫娘マリアどうか無事でいてくれプロトタイプを封印するためかコロニー全域が閉鎖された。は表向け事故として発表されたようだ自分の犠牲者の中にマリアの名前を見つけろ私は全てを失ってしまったもう何もない何も考えられない不思議以外にも何も恐ろしい私は何を考えているのか誰かオリジナルのデータをもとについにシャドウを完成させた記憶のコントロールも完璧だ全てをシャドウに託す構成に望むものあらばあれを目覚めさせよう世界に絶望を望むならそれであの基地からシャドウを放送するカオスエメラルドのエネルギーを得てエクリプスキャノンのコアは巨大な爆弾のようになっておるじいさんの言う通りこのままコロニーがぶつかったら地上は地に一つ残らんぞ
あのマッドサイエンティストめそりゃあんたのことでしょとにかく早くコロニーを止めなきゃおそらくコロニーの推進力もカオスエメラルドの力によるものじゃまずはその暴走を阻止せねばならんでもどうやってうん一つ方法があるあんたの宝石よあんたあの時言ってたマスターエメラルドにはカオスエメラルドの暴走を抑える役目があるって確かにこいつを使えばこの暴走を止められるかもしれないカオスエメラルドの反応はコロニーの最深部に移動しているもう間に合わないよいや柱全員が力を合わせれば最深部まで最短ルートを通っていけるかもしれんよし Ark from falling into the world. Yeah, um, who saw that plot twist coming? Yeah, um, a lot of people like to criticize Dark Story because it kind of comes the f out of nowhere with this dark plot about, uh, about Eggman's grandfather that wanted to take revenge on humanity because they killed his granddaughter Maria and basically he went mad. So he made it so that instead of Eclipse Cannon destroying the world, it's just going to. Caused the Ark to fall into the earth, killing everyone. A lot of people like to complain about this, but there were hints dropped later in the game. Well, earlier in the game, excuse me. I'm kind of tongue tied because I'm trying to concentrate. If you remember the writings on the wall in Prison Island when、um, Sonic was escaping in Metal Harbor, yeah, that was the same cell that、um, Professor Jarrell was hidden. While I do agree that it is kind of a dark shift, especially because he was executed via firing squad. There's a lot of stuff in this that I do like, and I'm, I'm sorry for the pause there. It's just like, I'm, again, I'm, like, I'm trying to focus at the same time of doing this, but we're actually done with Tales of Section here. And I neglected to talk about the gameplay in this section, but I'll get to it when we switch to our next character, which is Dr. Eggman. Now, Dr. Eggman's gameplay is basically the same thing as Tales, except a little longer.、Um, I've neglected to mention those switches we were hitting, they actually stop time. This is the only time of the game you'll be seeing that, but you're going to be needing it a lot for these sections. And it is cool to see the,、um, the good guys and the bad guys team up just to work together. One thing I do want to bring up that's a major difference between、um, Sonic 06 and this game, and why I prefer it in this game and not the later games, is that it makes sense why. Bo ow. It makes sense why the heroes and the villains are teaming up to、uh, stop Space Colony Arc. It's because it's just like Eggman said. You know, in、uh, Shadow the Hedgehog, how am I supposed to take over the city if there is no city? It's basically the whole mindset of, like, you know, we don't want the Earth destroyed either, so we have to work together. They're not changing, you know, from being good guys or bad guys. They're basically just working together for a common goal. Just stop Professor Gerald because, holy shit, you're trying to get rid of the entire Earth. Nobody wants that. Oh, no. Okay.、Um, even though you stop time,、uh, the. You know, green acid here is still active, so、uh, I might be in a bit of a pickle. Okay, I found a safe spot. I actually got stuck on this section a long time ago when I was a kid, so that, that's another fun story for you guys here.、Um, basically, um, yeah, so like, I like the dark shift. Oh, no.、Um, I like the dark shift in the story. And, you know, I do like that Shadow the Hedgehog like, goes over this a bit because they kind of skim over it in Heroes. But yeah, like, don't expect like, a full explanation as to what's going on until、um, Shadow the Hedgehog. But all you need to know right now is basically Professor Gerald, he was a,、um, he was a beneficial doctor that wanted to help cure、um, an incurable disease called NIDS, which is basically the equivalent of AIDS in the real world, that、um, his granddaughter Maria had, which is why she was stuck on Space Colony Arc, because you know, she couldn't leave the Space Colony. She could only survive in the artificial.、Um, The artificial、uh, atmosphere that the space colony provided. 
And it's because of this that she, um, that Professor Gerald created Shadow the Hedgehog because Shadow is immortal. Well, he has eternal youth, meaning he'll never die of old age. Because Shadow, despite being 60 years old, still resembles Sonic, who's supposed to be a 15-year-old teenager. And basically, because of this, he was seen as a threat. Well, at least, I'm skimming over a lot of um, important details. But for the time being, let's just say, Shadow was seen as a threat, despite being a cure for this incurable disease. And GUN, the military um, facility in um, Sonic, decided to shut everything down and... Because their soldiers are a bunch of dicks, they shot Maria dead, which not only caused, you know, Gerald to go mad, but also started him to reprogram Shadow into, if he ever got reawakened, to destroy the world. I'll continue more of the story as we get down later in this playthrough, but next we have the next section of uh, Cannon's Core. And now we are in Rouge's section of Space Colony Arc. Um, uh, Space Colony Arc, oh, duh. Uh, Cannon's Core, wow, I can't talk right now. Um, these sections, I actually like them the most when it comes to um, how you go about exploring uh, Cannon's Core. I also really like the music here, too. It's so hard to find remixes of uh, Cannon's Core, by the way, so I'm probably just going to have to use the original tracks, and I clipped right through that. Um, you may be noticing something for people who are kind of eagle-eyed, noticing the uh, geography of this place. Yeah, uh, the walls and everything look very similar to Lost World from um, Sonic Adventure, doesn't it? Yeah, now seeing the artificial chaos all around Space Colony Arc is starting to make a bit more sense, isn't it? Now, these sections here, you're basically just going around flipping switches. Rouge's section isn't that bad. It's Knuckles' section that gives a lot of people, ow, that gives a lot of people crap. Now, here's the thing. Like I said, I'm leaving out a lot of plot details, but all of those were coming in due time. Trust me on that. Now, the hardest part about Rouge's section here is actually getting back out. Just because you gotta time these blocks to make sure that they're not blocking your way out. And I... Ooh! Okay, I, ah! I was trying to not get hit there. Um, yeah, so we're basically done with Rouge's section. Rouge's section is not that hard, but if you think about, then yeah, it can be very difficult. But as we are now uh, pretty much um, flooding the area, we're going to be moving on to the next section. So let's get ready for that. And now we're starting Knuckles section. Now remember, uh, you may notice everything is underwater. Oh my god, phone. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, my phone. <laughs> my phone. I forgot to turn it on um, silent. My phone uh, has uh, Burroughs' sound effects from um, Shin Megami Tensei 4. Now, my friend, um, Amanda, she, for the longest time, did not know how to normally beat this level. She always thought that you had to glitch your way through the bars to get through to, um, get the switch over there. What you're supposed to do is freeze time and go down here. It's actually something that, um, it's kind of obvious, but I'm surprised that she never actually figured it out. No offense, Amanda, I love you, but, uh, yeah. So, uh... You notice how everything is underwater. Remember how I said in the aquatic mine, the air necklace seems helpful, but it seems a bit unnecessary? You need it for this section. If you do not get the air necklace for this section, God help you. You do see air bubbles around the section, so it is very possible that you can do it without the air necklace. It's just unbelievably hard. The first time playing this game, I did not know about the air necklace, so you can imagine, this is where my game ended. I was stuck, unable to beat this level, because I did not know about the air necklace, and I didn't know about the air bubbles things because I didn't see them around. But yeah, with the air necklace, this stage becomes a hell of a lot more easier. But um, that's basically it. This is hard if, oh, hi, big, um, oh, big, you made me lose my shield. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, this section can be hard, but with the air necklace, it just becomes a lot more manageable. But it's not as hard as you think it is. It's just, you know, Canis Core is not a hard level. You just gotta focus, and it is just cumbersome when you realize you basically are playing as every character in the game, so you do have to get used to that. But with this switch, we have now reached this final section of Canis Core. So who's the final character we're playing as, you may wonder? Well, you'll see. Okay, and as you guessed, our final character is Sonic the Hedgehog himself. 
You may be wondering, what the hell happened to Shadow then? Oh god, he wanted to give me a hug. Um, you may be wondering, what happened to Shadow? Well, we'll find out in a little bit. Um, this section is not that bad either, but yeah, there's a lot of places where you can easily mess up. Like right here. Omochao will tell you if you actually touch Omochao. I'm not gonna. Omochao will tell you that if you fall in that section, it's game over because there's no floor. Yeah, basically this area was designed to be a death trap. And you can see in Cannon's Core, it's really interesting with the level layout. That in terms of story, Professor Gerald purposely made the entrance to the Cannon's Core a death trap. Just so he would make sure that nobody would be able to interfere with his final master plan. It is kind of creepy when you realize that, wow. Um, Eggman's grandfather, whatever happened to him? And also, this seems very similar to Lost World, doesn't it? Now... I don't know if you guys connected the dots yet, but this next cutscene shall reveal to you the truth. Let's see it, shall we? Yes! Holy crap, first try! まあ、言ってもあたしだけのけものなんだから。あれはシャドウ。ダメよ、エミ。みんなだって頑張ってる。私も何かやらなきゃ。お願いがあるのシャドウ。みんなを助けてあげて。これは全て僕が望んでやったことだ。お前たちを助ける理由などない。助ける意味も。意味ならあるよ。確かにあそこでは毎日争い事が絶えないし、あのおじいさんが言った通り若者で自分勝手でバカな人間ばかりかもしれ